Okay, are we ready to get started? I think so. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you're just joining us, uh, please put your audio on mute if possible to um, make sure there's no background noise. Um, I want to really welcome everybody today. We're really going to talk about how the four pillars of life can help guide you through really the current situation, personal and global transitions. As such, it's really great that Rajasri is here again. We had a discussion back on May 10th on Mother's Day, which, which was the first recording of this. This is the second recording. Um, and we're going to really dive deeper into perhaps that the emotional, spiritual, mental aspects of yoga versus the asana and the physical practice of yoga. I think everybody here is familiar with, with Rajasri. She started yoga at four years old. She won the National India Yoga Championship five times. She's her the list of, of uh, her yoga career is very long. I've actually got about three pages here. I won't go through it all, but we're blessed to have you here to today, Rajasri. And I know a lot of your focus now is in that internal aspect. And Michelle, too, uh, director and owner of Bikram Yoga San Jose, BYSJ everywhere. We are really blessed to um, have, I'll call you the sponsor of this because we're really doing this through, through your studio. And so we're really honored or really honored and I thank you for that. So, Rajasri, are you ready to get started? Yes. Namaskar, everybody. Okay. I'm so delighted to be part of today's conversation, part two. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michael and Michelle, yeah. for providing this platform and continue help and support the human and community together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, again, I really look forward to this conversation and any questions. If you do have a question, Perhaps type it in the chat so M Michelle can take a look at it too. We're gonna to get those answered at, at some point along the way. And then also finish up with a nice meditation that uh, Rajasri will do at the end. Um, so let's jump right in Rajasri. Last time that, that we talked, we really talked about uh, really the four pillars of, of life and Brahmachara and um, how yoga can affect our life. And this time, you know, really want to talk what maybe may more in layman's term, I don't know if that's the right word, but kind of the four pillars of, of success, the four Ps. Can right. we start there? Is that a good place to start? I think that's a very good place to start. But I, if you allow me, I'm just going to come from the, maybe certain people are joining. They never heard our last uh, conversation. I'm just going to go very quickly to connect now what we are going to discuss. So then it's kind of have a continuity. So the last time we spoke about, it was about spirituality versus reality. That's our first topic. And then we break down to four pillars of life. And today we're going to talk about four pillars of success. And we are going to bring everywhere yoga and meditation because Situation this year, 2020, the current situation when we started, when we stepped into from March, maybe a little earlier from some other country, um, it was really scary. We didn't know what we were expecting. So the reality, that moment, shaken us all up completely. Completely that we were blurred, confused. We didn't know what is gonna happen, we're sad, and we're depressed. We, and we also had developed a lot of fear and a lot of you know, trouble, troublesome because of finance. It affected all of our daily routine. But if you look at it, what is exactly happened? Actually what happened that, that unprecedented situation made us it's not only confused, depressed, but made us discomfort because we were, we were certain kind of a behavior, we certain kind of a pattern in our life, all of a sudden that has a roller coaster ride. 
and some of us we try to find a place there some of us try we kind of fall apart some of us we lost it you know but if you look back now where we are in august really nothing has changed that much we changed we ourselves we change and that's all i wanted to always say about the practicing spirituality i always try to bring it very simple version spirituality spiritual is all connected with our breath you know breath breathing prana that's our life force how that affect to our life force so yoga is come as the auto relaxation response because we didn't know how to relax now we start learning you know how to relax how to accept these changes and just can make the change in your life present moment how you can be happy in this moment don't forget about future don't worry about past or, or i mean opposite don't worry about future and forget about past just the present so right now it's all about finding that peace and happiness and of course outcome is success and success comes having a happy life and a little bit getting too close to the finance that we can you know survive because it's really a survival mode we are all living in it's not about anything else it's that this success right now is all about surviving so four pillars of life so keep making that reality versus spirituality so if some people are thinking about i live in a spiritual life i live in a spiritual domain what the um <laughs> you know the spell if what's the definition of your spiritual life mean what do you i mean everybody's life has changed this time except okay, can i ask you about that raja shree because a, a thought came to me about that and we talked a little bit about this earlier is you know we we get into fear yes and then that attracts more fear and i i see that happening when i get that place internally i see that happening in the world as well or i get into that place of peace and that seems to attract more peace and the thing about the spirituality is i feel more spiritual when i'm more peaceful however i also know that that fear is also reflecting my spirituality at the moment yeah so basically we talked about that michael passed about anything we do like a yoga is a connections right is a connection with our body mind and spirit but we really don't see the spirit we just only can tell okay my energy you know how i feel it at the end my energy but if you honestly look at it yoga and meditation or anything we do the form it's more about body and brain body and brain where intelligence using intelligence we trying to um giving a experience or expression of peace happiness how you're realizing it you know but is it everything is body and brain of course brain also has there is a lot of scientific you know breathing you know like the breathing health i said again it's all about the response relaxation response that helps in the brain neurotransmitter to be accepting things different way because each inhale is our sympathetic like you we can fract everything i mean everything we are experiencing we are inhaling and then when you are exhaling it's all about parasympathetic because we are it's a parasympathetic activity we are deciding what to make ourselves attach and where we want to detach and where we want to let it go and what we want to keep it for us see the information march was coming we're holding everything now a lot of information is coming right now with our intellect we are or with our mind we are with our spiritual practice we are filtering we're really filtering and we are deciding and we are making that changes for ourselves and we are feeling confident about it our self esteem our self will and it's changing it's co- constantly changing our life so four pillars where we talked about different situation called belong and belongings which we cannot change 
then we talked about the purpose, then I'm just going touch base with, you know, just the past transcendence and then storytelling. And I try to connect with the four stages in life. And that was Brahmacharya Garhustha, Banaprastha and Shannasha, where we ended was storytelling and Shannasha because Shannasha is after Banaprastha where his non-attachment happened and you carry your life with the storytelling, which is called principles of life, what you have learned from it. And you also start talking about experience from life, you know, like, and you start sharing it. Definitely it comes later. And that's why just trying to make, give you idea, like when you are very young, people don't want to hear, even you know, but they know that you don't have enough experience. And when you start getting older people anything you say people start listening to you because they you know kids we are we sometimes we don't take it seriously but sometimes with their mouths a lot of things they say is very real you know very true very it's really that time we kind of stop them and say don't say that but they say it because they don't have a filter but when we get older we just started make sure that we don't want to hurt anybody so we stop talking about the truth at that time think about that this is also happening you know in life practically that's practical you can't deny that no matter what now that stop us a lot of time so when four stages four pillars of life in the story telling to the shanasha when you can maintain you know what a wisdom with nice respectful way and having that freedom of speech and i'm sure we all know what is that means because we are not we're not happy if we are not able to speak the truth but we were happy when you speak the truth but we are not hurting anyone you know that's also a way we we just want to know you know that's where the we always have a problem we always face, you know, how am I being non-spiritual or am I being spiritual? Did I, you know, we start looking back and we say, and we give a name called karma. Well, I did in my life in karma and that's why I'm getting this punish, you know, and some people don't even think, they just move forward. They don't even think about those. They don't do the plus minus with their life, what they have done it, what they didn't have done it, you know, like they don't. They don't have that equation. Some do. More conscious you are, more you're living in this conscious moment and taking responsibility, accountability, and you really think about it. And I think um, you can tell me what I should judge. Judge, you know, who think, who make a step with the conscious and cautious way is good or who is not even caring going forward? Who judges? The judgment is, are you happy? That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Around us, are you, they are getting, who is your community, who is your family, who is your friend, are they complaining? If they are complaining, they, definitely there needs to be a self-correction. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. we talk about today, I like to talk about more moving forward with that energy and how to make it more principles of yoga and breathing right and make life more useful, purposeful. You know, the purpose of life should be achieved during the time, the lifespan we live in, in this art. And it doesn't matter whatever the situation is. So the biggest thing is our intention and integrity in life. Intention. The, put, the intention we put out. But when you were a child, we really don't know. I mean, all of our intentions throughout our life, different stages, it changes, you know. We know in the pillars. We know where we are from, belongings and the purpose. But it changes. And I believe integrity in yogic principle, you know, eight limbs of yoga, what are those? Eight limbs of yoga is give us a structural framework in our life. Structural framework. 
So if we can follow eight limbs of yoga as a structural framework, life becomes much easier. And in yoga sutras, there is many sutras over 100, you know, close to 200, 193 or 196. And the sutras, everything they talk about, bring mind, relaxation of the mind. So we know that when we are relaxed, we can make an intelligent decision. We can make a happy decision. We can make a difference in our life. And when we are not, we know we do things different because we did it with irrationally, emotionally. Because breath affects emotion also. We know that. So yama niyama. Here I'm going to talk about what is yama niyama. We all know yama niyama many stages, right? Many steps. Now, I don't want to go too much in details of Sanskrit, but I want to talk about certain steps we don't talk about. That is called asteo and apurigraho, which is called non-stealing and ability. And um, apurigraho is more about ability to accept needs of freedom, non coveting which is called. Now, what is non-stealing and non-coveting does to us? Because in the beginning, all other steps we know, ahimsa, non-violence, you know, satya, truthful communication, then we do, uh, you know, then come brahmacharya, which is, uh, people always think about salivus, but it's more about, you know, moderation of all our actions in our life. And then non-coveting, and non-stealing, that has a lot to do with it. You know, it's a non-stealing and non-coveting is brings us the inner happiness. That is a yama, that's the framework, which is moral restraint. What we really need to practice and learn from the childhood. Every religious studies, they have different way. Because we are yoga teacher and the community we are dealing mostly with, yoga practitioners and yoga is more popular than ever in the world right now because you can practice yoga at home yoga at park and um, yoga, yoga is your own place yeah yoga is your own place you just need a corner and yoga you really need yourself the main thing is are you with yourself and if you're not with yourself, yoga helps you to find yourself. You know, yoga helps you to relax yourself. Yoga helps you to make happy. Something you do, yoga and meditation, is just like anywhere you can practice. And some, that's why I'm bringing up constantly, you know, in life, the part what is yoga offers to us. It's the big domain in life, you know. It's like huge. So, Shri, can over, I yeah, one just, thing, just I want to finish this, the, oh. my thoughts, then otherwise I will, what is non-coveting and non grow and osteo and non-stealing? It's all about finding a joy and happiness, overcoming fear. Remember that these are the four main things, overcoming fear, time management. That's a huge thing, time management. Half of us right now is stuck in the house. We really change our whole lifestyle. We don't wake up. Even everyone in the Zoom, you know, behind the camera, we forgot. We love this lifestyle. Believe me, right now, we all got used to it. But we also have crisis in there because we are not able to maintain the way used to lifestyle. But now we all got used to it and we start loving it. Think about it. And then time management sometimes is very hard. I mean, whole day goes by. You are on the phone, you are on the internet, you are behind the things, you are working, but you don't have that moving mobility, you know, the way you used to move, the way you used to get ready. I mean, uh, a lot of things has changed. You have to be self-disciplined mm -hmm. to maintain for your better health. The last is wellness and self-care. So I wanted to say that, that whole moral restraint in those yama teaches us how to practice niyama. So niyama is, is your own personal, but the main thing is finding joy, overcoming fear, time management, wellness, and self-care. 
if you could put these four things on your uh, you know calendar and see every, every day if you're going tick mark and see did I do all these things did I do so it all comes in and it's a very simple calendar you can create for yourself during this time and especially who knows how long this is going to you know stay I mean we are slowly different phase every country everywhere but definitely it's limited all our mobility you know movement everything we are detached from our family I can't see my family in India for so many months and um, you know it's just what it is what it is and I'm getting so many phone calls that I'm not going to see them anymore when I go back and that's sad and I know so many family is missing their family members in this um, situation but we are we we just listening from our home and we are just praying nothing we can do you know something that there is no power and we can fight with our inner power to change that power because we're going to make ourselves more sick and you don't want to be yes michelle now go ahead um I feel like I have a few things, um, but first I want to go back. So the the four pillars of life, just so I remember them too, Roger Street for everybody else. It was belonging, right? Yeah, uh, purpose was purpose. Be like purpose, transcendence, transcendence, and then storytelling. Storytelling. Okay, mm -hmm. and we had last time we had talked, we had also attributed those to phases of our own personal life. Yes. Right. Um, right. And, and then what I'm hearing you say too about these other four, I'm going to go back to my initial question, which was um, um, the, uh, the non-stealing and non-coveting, which I, I think uh, is so important. And I'm, I'm wondering, it's a question, that one, is, is that something that we uh, are constantly trying to learn uh, as we move through the four pillars? On, um, I mean, really, that is last three things, purpose, transcendence, and storytelling, non-stealing and non-coveting is constantly coming. Yeah. If mm -hmm. you think about a huge domain of non-stealing, you don't want to still live in the last phase of storytelling, anyone's life story to make your life different, but that's not truthful to you. You didn't experience, if someone has experienced something in life, you can't put yourself in there just to make it attractive, you know, saying that. It's just the experience, everyone. So how truthful you want to focus on yourself to be a better place. That's yeah. very important. Yeah. And then non-coveting, if you look at it, non-coveting is, it's, it's like, it's amazing that how you experience that, except needs the freedom. We know we are all in that position right now. We are all in that kind of a position and we can make ourselves many times in that position, but how you want to move with that, that's a very important thing Yeah. because most of the time we really, um, you know, like a, what our mind does not say a lot of time our brain says it because, Oh, I didn't experience, I have that greediness to, have it and then you know like we give we give an example like children wrong time you had it you didn't know how to manage it and they didn't know how to appreciate because we all need to learn things you know like how to appreciate that's a very important thing many times it's been handed over to us and we don't know how to manage it so when you achieve something by your hard work you really know how to manage it because whole Ateo is all about, Aparigraho is all about ability to accept only what is appropriate, non-greediness, free yourself from greed, hoarding and collecting. Think about it. It's a simple way of uh, my saying it, but many of us, we don't, you know, like when we have our first, I still remember my childhood. I didn't have any dolls. You know, I wanted to have a nice, beautiful dolls to play. And the school I went, my parents worked hard. My father worked hard to send me a good school. 
and they had a doll exhibition and several kids were coming from the rich family and they're bringing a beautiful doll to present the doll who walks and who works the opera, you know, the battery. And you know what I did? I still cry, but you know, something I appreciate now, my father brought me a nice book and says, here is the doll from all the countries. You can make that and you can do show and tell. So I started painting. That's the way I, you know, now I went back to my painting, coloring again. I started painting each country's yeah. doll. And when I posted in my big board and started showing this doll from Japan, this doll from Korea, this doll from India, this doll from Scotland, you know, all these countries' beautiful outfit. Honestly, I felt over there that everyone bringing such a nice little things to create a beautiful doll exhibition and I'm coming with a big board with a lot of pictures on it. But look at today, I appreciate in right now I'm back again, coloring and painting myself. And it's cr I cry, you know, and it's so funny. I started collecting some of the Beanie Babies and dolls when my kids were growing up and I tell them, and my daughter used to say, don't give, my, don't give me any good doll as a present. My mom will put it on the cabinet because I really didn't want them to. They had so many. They will break the legs and the hair and they will keep changing, you know, dresses. And I didn't want to open from the box even. I wanted to put it and I appreciate. You know, this is way I see things in life. And that's why I've been really um, excited about talking about all these things from my past and we brought up this spirituality reality and four pillars and happiness because we can be happy with the very little things but sometimes we are not we're fighting over so much Rajshri, can you jump more into what the four p's are yes my four p's but let me finish three things here okay in life Practically, because yama niyama is a four things there, which is we call, we make our, you know, mental restraint or, uh, you know, and physical changes and moral restraint and physical practice to a certain level that we, uh, we know what is our intention and we also start learning you know, what is called integrity. You know, it's more about the practice of yama and yama make us connecting those two words, which we'll talk about always, what is my intention and uh, what is my, you know, integrity towards my work or my life. The next one is comes called authenticity. You become an authentic person when you practice yama and yama, asana pranayama is your mind and body, mind, uh, not mind, sorry, body and brain work. So the moral restraint with the yama niyama and body and brain work with asana and pranayama. Think about it. So you become an authentic person. So every time we figure out certain people that are authentic when they are you connect with that authentic person. You know what they made themselves, you know, what hard work they have gone through, what the life they have, you know, doesn't matter where they are belongs or belongings, what was their purpose and how they changes their life, how they made the change in their life. So integrity, authenticity. It's come yama niyama, asana pranayama, then you become a, you practice the stage called pratahara, which is non-attachment. So when you have find certain people, you find them three all the five things together. And you know those people are authentic people, you connect with them, or you can make yourself that change if you know the formula, if you know how to change, how to bring that change within yourself, because no one can do that. We got to practice ourselves. We got to practice means it's not physical only practice morally we have to practice daily we really have to incorporate in our lifestyle all this discipline mm. then the possibilities will come the possibilities are what transformation where the mind is coming without the fear head is held high 
And that's where it makes everything different. The transformation. We just start one way, uh, wondering why I'm not transforming myself. Are you putting your effort until it's not happening or you are putting effort and you keep going back and you keep saying that, okay, I tried, I failed. Okay, I try new way. I try new things. That's what sometimes we do because when we have so much choices, but we have to stick with one and just we have to achieve it. So spiritual life comes with body, brain, and then the mind. And we can talk about mind with a lot of ways, you know, all the chitta vritti nirodha with the characteristics of the mind where all the qualities of the mind we achieve practice of all practice of all those experience that transformation will come dharana dhyana samadhi these are all happening in the mind these are not happening in yama niyama asana pranayama and pratyahara that's very internal those are out external but internal is happening focus meditation concentration self esteem will power you know that transformation the samadhi it's coming again the storytelling at the end going into the sanasa at the end think about this and inner happiness at the end because that freedom finding that freedom the tranquility you just cannot achieve transcendence it's a process going through that so eight limbs is a structural framework if we can follow we really can get the transform our life transformation will happen with integrity authenticity possibility is come and we got to experience that possibility possibility is not easy though you know wh- who comes that time a lot of in the mind those negative qualities are coming those we call anything we can call racket or turmoil you know the turmoils are when we are kid even right now all the time we want validation from others that the if someone is not telling me i look pretty i constantly i will continuously try myself hard enough to look pretty so even i don't want to make that change i will make that change think how many kids go through that and what is that mean you know it's a, it's it's a self acceptance is very hard for them because you can't change where you belong and belonging but you got to appreciate you got to stand for it that's what the big problem sometimes all the way at the end we go through a lot of um we are immigrant here immigrant citizen here and i know a lot of families go through that ups and downs because of just to adjust in the different culture different country sometimes is very harsh to say kids are not happy that my grandmother looks like that my mother looks like that my father looks like my grandfather behaves like that it's nothing you can change that you have to happy about it they care for you they're trying to give you best life then fear comes from that fear comes that fear within it takes a long time i still remember i mean when i left my country to come here very young girl and everyone la- ask me now what did you feel i had so much fear that time i didn't wanted to express my fear to anybody because my lack of confidence was fear but i was trying to pretend that everything is fine with my being you know new place that i cannot associate with anybody or connect with anybody but now i had everybody but now we are all living alone of course now i'm feeling comfortable i'm not afraid so many my from my life people are missing but the fear did not hold me back you have to outgrow that fear and that's where that possibility of transformation happen then it's come social image 
that's a big problem with the social image. It affects your mental, spiritual, and physical body. It's really a fact. I'm using all these words if listeners can hear and if they can connect with any word. I want you guys to look back within yourself and please start working and start writing, start developing. We are pure soul when you are born. We all have a potential. We all have a creative power. We are stopping. We are trying to get validation from the social life and who we meet every day or the friends. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame your family. They care for you. That's why they are telling what they are saying. I'm a mother and I know that. But you can listen and you can just go forward with your life. Okay, next one, Michelle, what was your question? You had um, a question. You just, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, you just said so much that was so beautiful. I, 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 I want to go back just for a second with the, um, the non-coveting because uh, your example with the dolls, um, you know, I think about our world, our world today. I mean, if there was ever a time, I guess, globally, especially here in the United States right now too, where we're being sort of forced to, you know, look at things that maybe we didn't necessarily think that we coveted, but we certainly did covet. Right. Because a lot yes, of we did. Are being stripped away from us. I mean, you know, more and more, especially here in California with with now. Now it was now it's hard to practice even outside because of the the air quality, you know, and oh, and no. now people have lost their jobs and they're they're losing their homes. And, you know, so there, so there's a lot of of, of op, like you said, possibility and opportunities for us to really sort of like you said, we're in this survival energy. But it is giving us an opportunity to reflect on, you know, what it is, you know, are we idolizing, coveting something, yes. you know? hundred percent. Each one is different because we're different. We all have a different, you know, yeah. aspects of, um, or we have a different situation. So we cannot generalize anything. But as long as we just focus on ourselves only, there is a possibility. Definitely. There is an opportunity. Yeah, it's just, um, I mean, we just caught up with what we had and comparing with what we do and didn't have it. Stop doing that. But what we have to make the most possible, I mean, outcome, if we can, then we get the best result out of that situation. Stop looking outside. Stop look what is there yeah. for you. Yeah. And, you know, learn. If you want to learn something, you learn, you know, like more. I mean, this is an opportunity. We are all stuck at home. I mean, if you could use more time to read more books and grow with your knowledge, you know, it's going to help you. And there is so much opportunity online to do some new work and do it. Right. If you have that skill. I mean, if you don't have the skill, learn. This is the time. Learn. You know, so I just always say that it's learning is all your life. It's never been, um, never, never end in there. Yes. Yeah. It, I just want so to add we, one, Yeah, one. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go I just ahead. want to say, I, I, it seems like right now with what you're saying, we have such a sweet spot in it. And I think it's a choice. And I, I find it fascinating that you're talking about this because you know, for all of us, right, when we think about, okay, um, the studio, for instance, in my case, could open in September, and I'm so excited about that, but at the same time, there's another part of me going, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have time to get such and such done, right, a new hobby or something, you know what I mean? It, 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 I, it, yeah, I mean, I, I want to mention one big thing over here, is like, because we are all coming from um, yoga background as a yoga teacher and we, our life depends on the earning from the yoga. And believe me or not, I just want to reflect back on my life. I'm talking about 35 years back or 30 years back just to keep it that easy that when um, first time I came here, 
and uh, earning with uh, yoga, just teaching yoga and earning money and earning living, it was not admirable. And it was, no one could think even that's possible. And right now, most of the profession is trying to become in a second job as a yoga teacher. And I feel like, honestly, it's good to the other professions are coming and acknowledging us. But the people who already have studio or their life was changed and started doing the earning with the yoga and the studio owners and the family, they supported. I mean, it cannot be free, you know. I mean, they can have some to help who cannot always we do that because as a yoga teaching we come from that kind of a um, authentic self that's giving um, as a karma classes and stuff but we need to start respecting this profession yeah. and who are who are there before when i'm talking about because of many studios i'm speaking and it's because of being closed yeah. down i mean even michael have gone through that michael shut down the studio i mean i went first time there yeah. And yeah. you, uh, Michelle, you're one of the successful studio owner in this uh, California state, and especially Northern California. I mean, you worked hard and you put your life to it. And um, and I know I was every year I was there and I saw things were moving. One and yeah, and you're trying to do things better. And just right before that, this whole thing happened. Now you put it on the you know, outside, I mean, you're trying to provide the community. I mean, community should appreciate that. I mean, I'm sure they should. And you try to provide this breathing classes to connect with the world this time, which is, which is free. And you're still offering, you know, I mean, I mean, you have some definitely costs that need it. You know, I mean, it's like, it's need that, I mean, we all need to hear this. Because a lot of time uh, we don't talk about it, but I mean, this is yoga teacher and prominent studio owner. I'm not talking about famous. I'm talking about having the studio in your community. You are helping everybody's wellness, health, physical health, and mental health. And if you are able to provide that now, I mean, more community support you need now than ever. Thank you. I, I yeah, appreciate I'm speaking that. Speaking behalf of this, yeah. because I feel that, and I see so many studios because of the circumstances, is not able to do it. Yeah. Somehow we just need to think about this as a practitioner. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I? I know we are getting close to it, but we haven't reached the four pillars of success. But we are going to leave today behind with everybody before the meditation, the four pillars of success, because we will have this continuation of more in life. The four pillars of success, all the business owners, even in your life, life, hey, part of life is whatever you do, your work is business, right? Passion. I'm very much believer in passion. I'm going to leave with four P for you. <laughs> so just remember, plan of action. Without plan of action, passion will not work. Plan of action. The third one is called persistence. In yoga, we can call intensity. But the persistence with, in spite of difficulties. So you are constantly, you got to try, you got to try. And the last one is called perseverance. The perseverance needs to happen. You know, you have to be faithful. It's called steadfastness. So it's a faithful to your work. So not quitting. So 4P again, I'm repeating. Passion, plan of action, persistent, perseverance. So this 4P is our framework for how to find success, four pillars of success. Now, is it a time for questions or anybody has any questions? 
Michelle or anybody that's listening, do you have any questions that you've that have come up along the way? Rajshri, I know one of the things that, that we talked about uh, in the past too is what I wrote down as attention, gratitude, and kindness. Mm, that's a lot of things we really need to work on. The at, uh, intention, gratitude, and the kindness. That's going to be my focus on my meditation today. Because we're putting intention and gratitude is all about that's what is authenticity is all about because mm -hmm. gratitude without gratitude many things never we actually achieve because if you are not having like you would for your family for your teacher for your life it's called appreciation because we i'm going to give you example like no matter how difficult my life is, I have to be gratitude towards people who put me in path and where I am today. Even my life may not be comfortable, may life be difficulties. I'm going through maybe very, very stressful time, very difficult time, maybe last five, six years, but everything we have to look at it, personal growth and having the gratitude for the time and the space and that area around me, because if I don't have it, then I can't let myself forward anymore towards the kindness. Is kindness with others, kindness with yourself. I'm going to be too hard on myself. That's what the biggest thing is about that when you put the intention out there, if you're without intention, if you are not, go when you have intention without gratitude, you cannot achieve the kindness. You're going to get always hurt means you are going to harm yourself constantly because gratitude is called forgiveness. And if you don't have to forget, I'm not telling you, but with the gratitude, we're going to have situation that where I am, where I'm today, where I can take myself forward. Where I, where I was and where I am today, if there is a mistake, accept it, change it, correct, move forward. Mm -hmm. But that's where we always, on all of us, when we are young, we don't want to take our mistake. You know, we want to acknowledge our mistake. And if we can do it, and I remember that many families I have seen this. My my uh, family was very much all the time, you know, like very uh, careful about me because that's the Indian traditions are always restriction. But if you give a little freedom, kids will have a chance to do a mistake and they will grow. And that's a very much way of, not so much. I mean, I'm not talking about extreme Eastern West discipline of kids, raising kids is a very different way. We are in a structure that we feel like, oof, we want to change. And here we are in your, no structure and we feel like, okay. And then, so I'm just giving really wide, um, ex, you know, like a explanation if that happened, that's really happening. Many cases, many families. But where I am studying, like, again, goes back to belong and belongings. And what am I doing today? Am I moving forward or am I keep moving backward? That's what I'm talking about, about gratitude. And if gratitude about your life, I'm not even talking about it. You have to be gratitude towards any person. If you don't want to show that, that's wrong. That's wrong. Everyone comes to your life, makes a difference. Everyone comes is meaningful. Everyone, everybody touch to your life. Everybody make a difference in your life. It's my eyes not to see that. My eyes not to accept that. I'm talking about everybody. You know, it's just, it's just we have to figure out that, like in yoga, we always say, when you start yoga, where was your strength? Where is your flexibility? Where is your balance? After doing one year or six months regular practice, where did you achieve? 
So when you, it's not about you starting four years old. It's not about starting 50 years old. Even four years old, you can lose it all the way in the middle. And 50 years old, you can start and you can still achieve it because you have a continuous gratitude and you had the intention put up there to improve. That's where the main thing. And all about in life is pain. So kindness comes without pain. Kindness can begin with pain, but when kindness comes, you recognize the pain and you don't put an attention into the pain. Because pain is a growth in life. So intention, gratitude, and the kindness, those three key uh, words we need to learn as the term in our life every day to go within your spiritual life. Yeah how to progress your spiritual domain. So we are living with four words for finding the success. And that is passion, plan of action, persistence, perseverance. And for the life, we are for spiritual domain to, you know, to make it uh, happier, intention, gratitude, kindness very nice thank you is there anybody else have any other thoughts or uh, brief questions that I'd like to address before um, we do our meditation Michelle do you have anything else I'm good that was beautiful I'm perfect so why not don't play the music now let's Close, close your eyes. And I just wanted to say a few things. And um, is it Michael? Are you playing the music? Not yet. To see, tell me no, no, it's... don't play. Don't play yet. I okay. will end with the music. Then we're not going to come back. <laughs> we're just going to okay. say bye. So let me um, have you all close your eyes. Inhale and exhale. Be comfortable. Keep your spine straight. When our spine straight, we can relax and we can flow the energy all the way. Balance out. So take a two inhale, three exhale. Take a three inhale, four exhale. Take a four inhale, six exhale. Take it three inhale. And when you inhale and exhale, first one, think about your intention. So start again. Inhale, intention. Exhale, kindness. Three, inhale, intention. Four, exhale, kindness. Again, three, intention. Five, exhale, gratitude. Again, four, intention. Five, again, gratitude. Anything can come in your mind. Anything. Now, slowly, six, gratitude, inhale. And six, kindness. Again, six, gratitude. Six, kindness. I'm grateful for my life. 
I am surrounded by healthy choices and positive people. We are meditating under the guidance of Lord, whose divine light illumines all realms of our life. Breathe, inhale, breathe. Prayer. Breathe out with blessings. Blessings is not giving up your power. Take the blessings for the people. You, you have a difficulty. Try to forgive them. They will come close to you more. Pray for them. Lead me from the unreal to the real. Lead me from darkness to light. Lead me from mortality to immortality. This is perfect. That is perfect. Perfection arises from the perfect. When perfection is taken from the perfect, perfection still remains. Michael, you can start. Om, peace, amen. Hope. Little bit louder. The song that I came to sing remains unsung to this day. I have spent my days in stringing and unstringing my instrument. The time has not come true. The words have not been rightly set. Only there is the agony of wishing in my heart. The blossom has not opened only the wind is singing by. I have not seen his face, neither have I listened to his voice. Only I have heard his gentle footsteps from the road before my house. The live long day has passed in spreading his seat on the floor. But the lamp has not been lit, and I cannot ask him into my house. I live in the hope of meeting with him, but this meeting is not yet. I have had my invitation to this world's festival, and my life has been blessed. My eyes have seen and my ears have heard. It was my part at this feast to play upon my instrument, and I have done all I could. Now I ask, has this time come at last, when I may go in and see your face and offer you my silent salutation? Thank you, everybody. Namaste. We all can hope and pray. Let's hope and pray, pray for safe and want, better world and, you know, and peace. But I talked to you there. There are often. Go ahead, Micah. 
Go ahead, Mike. No, that was a, another recording that automatically started after the minute. <laughs> so I just shut it off real quick. So no this problem. has been really wonderful, Rajasri. Thank you for your time and um, providing us some thoughts and ideas and, and insights. And Michelle, thank you again for hosting this through BYSJ Everywhere. Um, you're a wonderful example of service in, to the community, not only locally, but around the world as well. So greatly appreciate it. And thank you everybody for being here. Uh, feel free to share this with other people. Um, and it will be on Facebook, will be on um, your YouTube page too, yeah. Michelle? Yeah, yeah. Great. on our YouTube channel, yeah. Yeah, yeah and- you All know, of our, yeah. Yeah, and it'd be nice to do more of these. I, I, I feel so liberated every time we have these conversations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is a, this is definitely 2020. No, no, uh, con no, it's interesting that it's called 2020 because uh, I, you know, your insights, Rajeshree, they, they actually ring louder in, in a year where we are peeling away of a lot of external. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. When we, when we reach 20, think about it. <laughs> it's, everything makes difference. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks again. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.